Where are we going, Nepal? The Black Bog, a treacherous swamp known for its tar-like waters and the slimy creatures that inhabit them. But before we get there, you have to sign a waiver. Because of how dangerous it is? No, no. This is just to verify that you are not Anish Kapoor, nor are you entering the Black Bog on behalf of Anish Kapoor. What is this, some kind of joke? Yeah, dark humor. <laughs> Good morning everyone, and welcome back to another episode of World Builders, a series where my players and I create a brand new setting for the MCDM role-playing game, now titled Draw Steel. In this episode, we'll be exploring the Black Bog, a sinister swamp in the cursed land side of Ambrosia, the setting for our duality, blessings and curses campaign world. I'll include a link in the description to the tactical battle maps shown in this video, as well as other new content you can try out in your game. Because the rules for Draw Steel are still in development and the licensing agreement for third-party content hasn't been ironed out just yet, I'll only reference rules that directly relate to the content of this video. For the full playtest rules, check out the MCDM Patreon linked in the description. The Black Bog is a corrupted swampland whose waters have turned as thick as tar. The trees have taken on a rubbery texture, some animated by the chaotic magic of the region to push unwelcome visitors to their doom in the sticky blackness. Native beasts are imbued with these dark waters, dripping foul-smelling liquid across the dismal land as they fly, crawl, or slither about. A hazard many adventurers face in the Black Bog is the Brute Cypress. These massive trees sway of their own accord in the stillness of the swamp. Their thick branches lash out at nearby adventurers to shove them into the black waters of the bog. Another danger is sludge bats, flying mammals that carry the tar-like waters of the bog within them. Their skin sheds the noxious liquid with every flap of their wings hindering those who would follow their dark trail. Both the Brute Cypress and the Sludge Bats have game mechanics associated with them when using the Black Bog tactical map, as described in the next section. The battle map for the Black Bog is a 50 by 50 square grid divided into four quadrants. Each quadrant has a separate theme and can be used alone for smaller battles or as part of the whole for massive combat encounters. The northwest quadrant is a cypress shore dominated by a cluster of brute cypress trees along with some tall reeds and grasses for concealment. The northeast quadrant is the old docks, with plenty of reeds and smaller trees for hiding and sneaking. In the southwest corner are the mud islands, where characters can leap from the shore to various small islands in the bog while fleeing from their attackers or chasing foes. And to the southwest are the sinking ruins, the remnants of a decaying stone structure partially claimed by the bog, perfect for attacking opponents from higher ground. Here are the game mechanics associated with the Black Bog tactical map. At the start of each round, check for characters on the shore within three squares of a Brute Cypress. This area is denoted by fallen leaves on the ground. Each of those characters must make a Might Resistance roll. On a Tier 1 result, the characters push two squares closer to the water. On a Tier 2 result, the characters push one square closer to the water. And on a Tier 3 result, the character remains in place. The Bog Water has its own dangers. First, moving into a water square requires one additional square of movement unless the character has a swim speed. In addition, if a character begins their turn in the water, they must make a might resistance roll. Tier 1, they take 4 poison damage and are slowed until the end of their turn. Tier 2, they take 2 poison damage. Tier 3, they resist the damage entirely. Tall reeds, which can be found at various spots along the water's edge, provide concealment and allow a character to hide as per the hide and sneak rules in the playtest document. The trees, boulders, and ruins on the map provide cover. This includes the brute cypress trees, although getting near them does have some drawbacks as mentioned previously. Traveling to the mud islands in the southwest without wading through the toxic waters requires characters to jump from the shore or from island to island. As per the playtest document, characters can jump a number of squares equal to their might score without a test, with a minimum jump distance of one square. A running jump of at least two squares increases this distance by one square. To jump farther, the character must make an easy might test, with their tier 1 result being the normal distance they can jump, tier 2 jumping one additional square, and tier 3 jumping two additional squares. Some areas of the map have climbable terrain. This includes the boulder and fallen tree in the southwest and the walls and ruin in the southeast. These are all elevated one square above the rest of the battlefield except for one section of the wall and the center of the ruin, which are elevated two squares and denoted with whiter stones. Characters without a climb speed must spend an extra square of movement to climb up these structures, 
but gain an edge on attacks made against characters at lower elevation. A swarm of sludge bats can be found around the ruin in the southeast. While they do not attack characters, they can pose a minor hazard. The director should randomly choose a character or squad in this quadrant at the start of each round. The swarm circles the character, dripping sticky tar onto the battlefield. All spaces adjacent to that character or squad are difficult terrain until the end of the round. Combat scenarios in the Black Bog may involve tracking down a stolen treasure or rescuing a hostage taken by a band of goblins native to these swampy regions. Here are some sample enemy selections based on the number of heroes involved in the combat, all with a standard encounter difficulty. This chart assumes first level characters with no victories, but you can easily add a few more minions if your party has already succeeded at an encounter or two prior to this battle. In addition to the goblin tribes that dwell in these swamps, the Black Bog is also home to a tribe of salamander folk known as the Salamanca. You can download the story of the Salamanca and their relevant rules from the link in the description, but here is a brief overview. The Salamanca are a primitive species of amphibious humanoids who reside in the wetlands of Ambrosia. They are generally peaceful people, but have few interactions with other cultures, thus leading most outsiders to think of them as naive and socially inept. Having no spoken language of their own, Salamanca who travel outside of their village have learned the common language of Kalium. Salamanca traits include the ability to swim and breathe underwater, as well as regrow lost limbs. This last trait essentially gives them an extra recovery to use before resting, although it does come with a penalty until that limb has a chance to fully reform. A handful of naturally spawning treasures can be discovered within the midst of the Black Bog, usually growing from magical plants or fungi on the island near the center of the full map. Directors can assign one of these treasures to an encounter, determine them randomly, or have players search for treasures with a skill test and use a result to decide their reward. One of these treasures is Burst Bloom, an explosive puffball-like fungus that releases a shockwave when struck. The Burst Bloom can be thrown at a creature or location, knocking everyone around it backwards when it explodes. Another is Serpent Root, an animated plant that can imbue a single weapon attack with the ability to hold a target in place momentarily. A hero can decide whether or not to use the Serpent Root before making an attack. After a hit with the weapon, the target is restrained until the end of its next turn. One final treasure is Nightmare Lotus, a rare flower whose nectar contains a deadly toxin. Applying this nectar to a weapon increases the damage of the next attack made by the hero when using that weapon with higher results dealing more poison damage in addition to the weapon's normal damage. That does it for this episode. Feel free to download and use the maps and other content from this video as you try out Draw Steel, and look forward to more videos on this new and exciting role-playing game from MCDM Productions. Until next time, I'm David Watches. And I'm Napoleon Mandia. And thanks for watching. Special thanks to my longtime friend Bill Batchelor for creating the logo for this channel, and to Dylan Smith for the character art used in this and other videos. I couldn't have done it without them. For more gaming tips, check out these hot videos.